Okay, cool. So live streaming is on. There we go. Cool. Okay, we are live. Um, wow. Well, Shock the web, March 2022, final project presentations. Um, we are super excited to, first of all, have everyone here. Thank you everyone for coming and taking part. Um, it's been pretty awesome to see this many submissions come in. I think there might be 11 now in total or 12. So um, we're basically, the way this is gonna run is we'll give everyone like five minutes to just quickly present your projects. For those of you who aren't here or are able to present your project, we'll just stream your video and then um, maybe we'll have a couple minutes for Q and A's at the end as well. Um, um, there'll also be a 30 minute time window between this and the uh, final sort of results. So if there's any other chit chat as well and stuff like that, maybe we'll, we'll put that in there. Um, and also we'll have a put hackathon hangout as well. So um, just in the interest of keeping things brief and giving everybody an opportunity to talk about their projects and present their projects. We'll try and limit it to about five minutes each. Um, uh, again, thanks everyone for taking part. Thank you to the mentors, the judges, everyone who gave a talk or a workshop. It's been such a great seven days and hope you guys have all had fun as well. Um, it's been a bit of a blast for us, also a bit crazy and hectic, so as hackathons are. So. Um, Without uh, further ado, maybe we can actually just get started and avoid my waffling. Um, so first up on the list is, uh, I'm just going to do this in order unless anybody, um, unless anybody has opposes that. Um, first up on the list, we have uh, Bolt Boosters, which is a project submitted by Subarex, Subarex, I hope I'm uh, saying that properly. Um, so if you would like to, hopefully he's in here. Um, if you'd like to unmute yourself and um, present your project, I saw that you said that you would like to present it, um, then feel free to hop on up here and let's, let's see what you came up with. Stage is yours. Uh, hopefully he's in here. I actually can't see his name. Um... Okay, well, potentially we can start with someone else then. Uh, Quinton, are you in here? Yes, I am. Cool, Quinton. Hello. How would you like to present your project? Um, well, actually, I can just uh, share my screen. Um, let me just uh, share it. Uh, can you see my screen? So it should say sad streamer. Yeah. Yeah. Can see yeah. Okay. So uh, let me just uh, log in and uh, show my webcam here. Um, so basically, um, this is uh, the uh, application that I made. So uh, right now, I am connected over a web socket to uh, clnhub.mainnet.getalb.com, which is uh, our experimental uh, LND hub backend at, uh, at Albi. Um, so basically, this uh, application allows a live streamer or someone participating in a group call like I am now to um, accept uh, lightning donations. Um, and uh, so basically, uh, it works with an, a lightning address. So if you send some uh, sets to this lightning address, uh, they should be displayed uh, live in the uh, web application. Uh, so basically, this is live right now. So anyone sending funds to uh, <laughs> yeah, here we are. So anyone that sends uh, sets to this uh, lightning address uh, should have their comments uh, pop up uh, on the web app. Uh, so basically, that's it. Uh, uh, so I, I've also like, uh, this also integrates well with YouTube. I've been live streaming some gaming on my YouTube channel, uh, the past couple of days. So I, I just use some streaming software to cut out some parts of this, uh, web, 
some parts of this web app, uh, for example, this latest donation widget, you can have it in the side of your uh, live stream on YouTube. Um, it, it also integrates well with Albi because Albi uh, also integrates with YouTube. Uh, if you have your Lightning address in the description, then it, it integrates seamlessly. Uh, so some other feature of this app, you can show your webcam, you can show the highest donation instead of the latest, which is kind of a way to like auction off uh, the advertisement space, so to speak. This can even be used in, in let's say, a live, a live event. Oh, we got a pay. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> we got two more payments, but uh, the first one didn't have a comment, for, uh, apparently. So I was saying, like, if you have a live event and you... Uh, um if you uh, um project this on the wall of a of a party let's say then you have could have your advertisement space uh like auctioned of life uh, over the internet or something um i i also have a, a way uh, of uh, picking the voice so i can make this say things in a german voice for example uh <laughs> yeah that was just just <laughs> just in time okay yeah so basically there are also some risky uh elements here so uh it, it shows media from j dot uh, jpegs and and gifs uh, it should it should show them here if if the if the text that is sent is a is a link uh, then uh, is a is an image then it will show the image uh, but the, the source need to have um, uh, course enabled, of course, otherwise it won't work. And uh, I also have the option to uh, auto open uh, links if you send a link. Yeah, yeah, for example, like that. So it, it can also get a bit uh, not safe for work, but don't don't do that, please. Uh, if you send a link, it will auto open the link. Uh, so don't send anything embarrassing, please uh so uh basically that's a bit of a, a very a very risky option, option. uh so uh, basically that's it uh, i also have the lightning address uh, the alan url qr code here uh, encoded for if people watch that that want to use a mobile wallet or, or anything uh so basically that that's it that's uh yeah uh, that's a project <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> awesome. That's super cool. Um, and yeah, I guess thanks to everyone for not sending through to <laughs> <laughs> images and stuff like that. Um, keeping it PC. Um, does anybody have any quick questions? Maybe for maybe we've got time for a quick question. If anyone has any for, for Quinton, I see uh, Mick. You've got your hand raised. Do you? Question? Just if you if you want to say something, you can just say something. I think. Yeah, I think you can just unmute yourself. Yeah, I can. Can I ask a question, Quentin? Yeah, certainly. Uh, wh why did you build that? Um, because I thought it was funny, <laughs> uh, because I was, I was, I was, well, uh, previously, uh, I, I watched some gaming streams on YouTube and, uh, text to speech donations are, are always, always quite funny. So I, I thought it would be funny if, if someone made this, uh, with lightning basically. So that's the reason that I built it. Okay. And, and how did you integrate the video into the app? Uh, this is just so, so this web page that you're seeing here, set streamer, uh, it's, um, it's just a webcam, uh, in a web page. So it's okay. not really that. So the app is, is made using flutter actually, um, because I don't know any JavaScript and it's, I, I also don't know any front end. That's why this, this page is, is quite basic and ugly. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the, 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 the actual, what you should do is, is have streaming software to cut out parts of the app and overlay it on your live stream. Basically, that's also something that you could do or yeah, uh, today someone, um, suggested that I should make this into a plugin for streaming software, uh, where you can, uh, have the donations integrated into the streaming software itself, uh, which should all also be possible. Yeah. Okay, thank you. 
Cool. Okay. Yeah. Thanks so much, Quinton. Um, again, if anyone has any like further questions at the end, hopefully we'll have some a bit more time later on for Q and A and just general chit chat. Um, so next uh, is uh, Toby. Um, Toby, would you like to present? I think. Um, I can show. I will also share my screen. I guess. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Um, okay. So, yeah, so my uh, app here is the Lightning Tip Gallery. And what you can do here is, so you need to be logged in with Albi. So I'm all logged in. Do you in see, here. do people see your screen? Because I don't. Uh, I can see it, I think. Now I can see it, yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, the app is the Lightning uh, Tip Gallery. And... Um, it works with Albi, so you need to be logged in here with Albi. Um, and the setup looks like this. This gallery here is owned by, just a second. So I'm running it with Polar. It's owned by Carol. So she's the owner of this website. And uh, now I'm logged in here as Alice. And what I can do here is I can buy a tip. So I, I can be listed here as a tip. So I, let's say I want 120 sats for uh, a unicorn. And then I send it to, to the wall here. And now someone else can come and pay this one. And this is going to the user who is currently locked in in, in, um, in Albi. So if I change the user here and go to Erin, then I can pay this one and this this money is now going to Alice so basically it's a Alice was requesting a tip and uh, you can send strangers tips for something they requested and there's also some and uh, maybe to show how this works so I'm I'm using um, this uh, um, this uh, make invoice function of FLN to get an invoice from Albi. And then I sent the invoice basically in the description to Carol and Carol uses this information out of the description to then um, show it here on the page. Yeah, that's it. Questions? Nice, Same nice. question for me, Toby. Why, why did you build that? Yeah, I was uh, inspired. I was starting with this uh, guest book thing and started with this and extended it a little bit. It's basically a guest book where you can post invoices. Yeah. Nice one. Okay, cool. Uh, thank you very much, there, Toby. Um, I think I saw uh, Sibirak came in. Um, are you? Yep, yeah, he's here now. Do you want yep. to present your project? Sure. Yeah, you can hear me. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Loud and clear. All right. Ed, in our list, in the judges list, uh, what is that? Uh, I can find. How did you list it in the in the Excel? Uh, sorry, Roy. Can you repeat your question? I'm asking how did you name this project in your in the in the spreadsheet? Uh, Subirex one, uh, I believe it was called Bolt Boosters. It was the first one. Okay, cool. Yeah, it was the. Uh, I don't think Subirex was here when we first came in. Yeah. Yeah. In a little late, but yeah, uh, yeah. I I created this little app um, basically to allow anybody to hopefully monetize any video that they want to instantly and for free. Um, the idea being for creators. So um, on the on the other end, it'll allow users to, or you know uh, followers to boost you sats as they watch the video. Um, so. This is kind of like the creator login page, let's say, or the creator uh, create link page. So we can just go ahead and do that real quick. Um, you have to have an LN, LN address, and you can um, 
paste the video embed link. So it's not just the video link, it's the embed link. And then the Apple, um, it, it doesn't quite work yet, but you get the idea, at least in terms of the unique link up here that you'll be able to share with your followers. And the creator will see this page when they log in. Um, so they'll get a, like a little preview of the experience below of what uh, a user might see. Um, so let me just jump to the next tab. We can walk through like the user experience. So the user, this is what the user sees. Um, I'm gonna sign out here to make sure I can connect to LV. And yeah, this, if I didn't mention it, it all runs through uh, LV. You can log in here. Remember a sats budget, obviously. Um, hopefully this video will load. It wasn't loading quite yesterday. But um, yeah, you can just quick select send sats and you can see it in the boost log here. Um, it also tells you that you've like initialized the connection and that sending sats is enabled. Um, and yeah, just walk through these buttons to prove that they work. <laughs> um, and they can you can send any amount of sats you want. And it will show it up here in the in the boost log. And right. yeah, that's it. Um, that's all. Cool. That's awesome. Um, I'm waiting for Roy to come in with the same question, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but maybe I can ask it. Why? Why, why did you build this? The yeah, no, I just, uh, I was trying to think of ways to integrate Lightning into the already existing web. Like, obviously, um, I think monetizing videos can get a get, bit tricky unless you have like a huge YouTube following, right? Um, and I just wanted a way for, for anybody really to to be able to receive, receive sats um, and wrap their, basically wrap their videos in a sat receiving kind of website. I thought that'd be pretty cool. Um, I think you could you could definitely also like extend this to live streams, like similar to Quentin's. Um, but yeah, uh, just wanted to to explore the space. Uh, it's my first Lightning app, so I was happy to to get it out the door. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's a pretty awesome first Lightning app. So kudos to you, man. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, up next we have the Atlanta Bit Devs. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Stephen, doing well. Good presentation. Okay, can everybody uh, see my screen? Okay. Yep. Um, so I'm I'm Stephen Delorme. I'm here with uh, Brian uh, from my team as well as Nick. Um, so uh, I'm gonna kind of lead this demo here, but uh, Brian and Nick, if you guys have comments you wanna make, jump in at any point, uh, please do so. Um, so yeah, our project uh, is called uh, Arion. And uh, you know, the, the basic kind of idea is that uh, parking uh, your vehicle can be uh, kind of a frustrating experience, probably in any city, but you know, particularly for us in Atlanta. Um, and uh, you know, uh, sometimes there's parking lots available. Sometimes you uh, got to go and uh, get some street parking and all that and a meter. And if they if they do have an app, you have to, you know, log in or type in your credit card. And if there's a kiosk, it's probably buggy. And if there is a bug, everybody's had a bad experience with parking mercenaries. And, you know, you get overcharged or you get your vehicle booted or maybe impounded or, or something like that. Um, so we saw this as a kind of a problem in the real world and tried to think about uh, how to solve that. So breaking down that problem is that you got friction during the parking payment process, which slows users down from getting to local businesses. Um, and then also, you know, when you have frustration with the parking mercs or the technology that they're using to park that, you know, kind of just creates a general bad vibe. I, ideally, you want your city to be this really frictionless, easy place to go hang out and spend your money. I'm kind of thinking from the perspective of how you pitch this to, you know, a city planner or somebody running a commercial parking lot. Um, so our solution was Arion. You don't need any kiosk. Uh, you can pay directly for, from your phone. Um, the user is going to receive notifications uh, if the parking time is going to expire and they can uh, re-up the notifications 
um, remotely just from their phone. So this is supposed to be a, a an app that's on the user side. Um, but the, really, the most important thing about this is that it's a lightning fast checkout experience, and that's thanks to Bitcoin. Um, so the way that this would start out is uh, the user goes, let's say they uh, parallel park uh, their vehicle uh, on the curb and they find this QR code on the curb. So they would scan this. So this is a real QR code. And uh, just for the sake of brevity here, I'm not going to actually whip out a phone. I'm just going to go to a browser tab. But it would essentially take you someplace like here, which is arianparking.tech. And when the user scans the QR code, there would actually be like a unique uh, identifier up here um, in, in the web address that makes an API call, pulls the sparking, parking spot details, all of that. OK, so that's where we're parking our car. So I tap step one. I can now increment the timer um, and all that. Say I think I'm going to be this side of town for three hours. OK, um, so now I'm going to go to the next step. I'm going to enter my phone number. And this is going to be so I can receive a receipt and get notifications about top ups. Um, you know, in some kind of uh, future real world deployment, you could potentially uh, scan a photo of the license plate to make it even more frictionless on the user. But for now, we're just going to type in our license plate number. Uh, C one, two, three, four. OK, and now we're at the checkout screen. So this thing has generated a real lightning invoice. Uh, so let me just copy that real quick and I'm going to um, whip out, uh, I would whip out Breeze, but I don't think I have enough sats in that wallet. So let's just go to Phoenix for now because that's all loaded up. Okay, got my thing out here. Paste from, got to paste it from my clipboard and got a pending lightning paint. There we go. Okay, so that was a mainnet lightning transaction right there. Um, and then uh, we just, you know, once this tr lightning transaction goes through, we can, you know, mark uh, in the database that this parking has been paid for. Um, user can submit feedback, all that kind of stuff. Um, got this kind of idea mocked up where, again, the user can get notifications um, when uh, their parking is about to expire and uh, get, you know, get get a top up on that. Um, but also, you get you could think of them from the enforcer point of view. There's ways to make that more easier too. You know. Uh, making it so that the enforcer could be kind of like a gig economy worker and then they go and uh, they select the parking lot that they want to enforce and gives them some details on it. Um, they decide to take the job and then they go through and they, they mark the spots that are parked and are vacant and it uh, could, you know, compare that against what's in the database and then pay, pay the uh, parking lot attendant and Bitcoin as well. Um, if you kind of, I think uh, this would be a good place to just kind of segue very, very briefly into um, our tech stack. And uh, Brian, you worked really hard on a lot of this. And if you want to chime in here um, at any point, um, let me know. But um, like I said, basically, the user is going to scan the QR on the on the uh, the curb. Uh, we have a Firestore database in the cloud. Um, so that's where the UUID is able to get the parking details from. Um, then uh, once those details are returned uh, back, we've got a React front end. They go through, fill out the form. Um, we have an API call from there that fetches a new Lightning invoice from OpenNode. Um, user pays that invoice using whatever Lightning wallet they want. It's just a Bolt 11 invoice, um, BIP21 in the future, though. Um, and uh, we do some polling in the browser to check and see if the invoice is paid or not. And then we can mark the parking spot as occupied in the database. And if you'd like to see uh, all the work that's been done on there, you can go check out our GitHub page. There is a, a front end code here and then back end code uh, there. And you can see everything that we've been working on. Also got some kind of future issues open here for like, um, you know, kind of feature requests. Um, I think it'd be cool to stream sats. Um, so that you're you're not overpaying for parking, you're just streaming sats while the cars are parked. Um, had some ideas about you know having a collateralized payment and in, in case of violations, um, if it, it have to explore if that it makes the process more efficient. Maybe a use a login with LN URL off for uh, frequent visitors, that kind of thing. Um, so there's all kinds of ways that we could potentially expand that idea. Um, uh, just quick, some shout outs to the team. Uh, like I said, Brian's on the call here. He, this was his original idea, I guess, when he had a bad parking experience the other day. Um, and uh, he is the, the back end badass who, uh, you know, did, did a lot of our API work. 
Um, Nick, so Nick here on the call, learned Figma over the weekend and uh, built out a lot of artwork. He did the horse stuff. He did the, um, uh, uh, I think we got some cross chatter back in the background there. I'm not sure if somebody could mute, please. But um, Nick, uh, Nick uh, did the enforcer view and the logo. Alex uh, Lewin also helped off the back end. James, Har James Harris did UX research on how to best present the user with the QR code. Jordan Brookman did front end, and I did uh, some design and front end dev for this. Um, so that's pretty much our, our project um, right there. And uh, yeah, had a lot of fun working on it. Awesome, nice work, Atlanta. Represent. <laughs> I see, it uh, looks like someone's in a car there actually as well. So perhaps, uh, I don't know if it's uh, someone from the team, but. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm also, just use. yeah, John's go for it. And also, if you're not talking, please, Um. Uh, yeah, we have uh, yeah. about 40 people here. So. Uh, if you're not talking, please uh, keep your mic muted. And uh, yeah, thanks. Question, Stefan, if I may. Mm -hmm. Love love the project, uh, by the way. Uh, wonderful. Uh, for the Bolt 11 invoice, did you, did you consider other options? Uh, LNURL pay, for example? Yeah, I think I think you know there's a lot of valid ways to approach this one thing we did approach was again like using ln url for you know doing some streaming sats and we we ran into some issues with you know wondering if the user's phone needed to be online but we definitely did consider some other options i think ultimately we went with the bolt 11 because it was what we were most familiar with um and felt we could accomplish on a short period of time but um i think definitely for the uh um the auth component of it uh, ln url would play a big part in that I'm asking uh, because of the polling, uh, the fact that you need to poll in order to understand that the invoice has been paid. Maybe, maybe Ellen URL Pay can can provide you with a solution that you don't need to. Yeah, so to you're saying poll. I need to I need to go uh, read the uh, Ellen URL spec a little closer, is what you're saying? <laughs> maybe, maybe there's some some more flexibility there. Makes sense. Thank you. There's a LUD20, which can send a, a webhook back. You can specify a webhook, but it's not been implemented everywhere. It's um, being discussed currently in the protocol. Oh, um, that would be cool. That'd be real handy. Yeah. No more uh, set interval, uh, use effect set interval. Yeah, it's pretty powerful. Yeah, go check out the um, the PR, I think, in, in the LNURL protocol repo and have a little look through it, LUD20. LUD20. It's good. Awesome, thanks. Cool. Okay, thanks, guys. Um, sorry, just for the interest of time here, just so everyone can try and present their projects. Um, there were probably a few more submissions than we thought, actually, so we're, we're kind of tight. Um, but um, awesome work, Atlanta. Um, that was really, really cool to see. Um, uh, Rene, how are you doing, sir? Um, and would you like to present your project? Sure. For the tenth time this week, <laughs> we've already been seeing it. Some of us, but just yeah. a second. No worries. All right. Do you see my screen? Yeah. Should say pay anyone. Yeah. Nice. So I was taking a deep dive into Rebellion um, this week, and I was trying to uh, fiddle around with all the possibilities, basically, and come up with this WebLN experiment site, which you can also visit in your browser on webln21.net. And um, there are a lot of use cases. Uh, some of them have already been shown, um, like in, in the site streaming, um, which uh, you can have like new UX um, like experiences. So you would pay for scrolling a page or something um, there it says you might want to set a budget if you're um, you're more often. Uh, let's set a budget and scroll down further. <clears throat> so you would always like pay one satoshi per uh, section of the page. Um, I've also done some um, yeah experimentation with Keysend, which was also very interesting for those of you who don't know. Um, Amboss.space has this fancy billboard here, 
and what you can do with um, Keysend is basically you type in their node ID here and, and some fancy message, you send it, and again, um, your WebLN wallet is invoked. That's probably the most easy way to like pay to get on this billboard. <laughs> so if everything works, you should now see this message down here exactly. Um, and you can use it to yeah, send uh, key signs to every other node. Uh, I've also done a login, but the most cool thing, in my opinion, is this widget. So I figured right now it's quite hard for website owners to integrate Lightning payments without coding knowledge. So you need to take a lot of, uh, and you need to take care of a lot of things like error handling, fetching invoices, generating QR codes if there is no WebLN wallet available. And um, I came up with with this very easy way for website creators to accept Lightning donations on their website. So what you would do is you go to this page. You let's say we um, want to create a widget for Boomi, for instance. So you would just fill in your Lightning address, your name, and maybe some fancy project picture, and click on Generate. with the new data and it also generated this embed code for you and all you need to do as a website owner is now to copy this code um, place it into your website and then it you could come up with like yeah very a very easy way to integrate this kind of widgets into your website um, if you click pay um, this widget is rebel and capable so you will see your WebLN wallet, but also has a fallback option. So if we disable Aldi for a second, here we go. You reload this page um, and you click again on pay. It would offer you a QR code and the invoice itself. So you could also pay it with, with an external wallet. So yeah, this is basically a very easy way for website creators to embed Lightning payments into their websites. Yeah, I think that's about it. Awesome, man. Um, I think we've got about 30 seconds to a minute of questions. If anyone would like to ask Renee a question, I see Toby, you raised your hand. I was just clapping. <laughs> ah, okay, no worries, no worries. Cool. Well, again, guys, we'll have, uh, we'll have some time later hanging out to sort of ask each other questions and play around with these things. Um, <laughs> Thank you very much, Rennie. That was super awesome, and yeah, great to great to have you here. And just cool to see everything that's been like soaked up um, piece by piece. So um, yeah, hats off, man. Really cool. Um, next up, we have the guys over at and girls, ladies, people uh, over at LN Shop. Um, is there anyone here um, who would like to present this project? Hey Rohan, how you doing? Hey, what's up? All right, that's so. I'm just, I'm just gonna go straight from the demo, and I've already uh, made my sacrifices to demo gods, so hopefully this works. <laughs> Fingers All right. Hello everyone. Um, I'm Rohan Smith, and I'm a part of the Ellen Shop team. Uh, we have we decided to create a Shopify for Lightning. Um, so basically, uh, uh, an easy way for merchants to create shops and well, accept e a do e-commerce over the Lightning Network. Um, we wanted it to be pretty easy to install, pretty, so, so it requires a little technical expertise, um, also easy to maintain. Um, so the, the decision we made was to make it a a strictly front-end static um, website 
using more of the Jamstack, so it's just JavaScript and um, APIs and markup. And we, we came up with a, a project we call LN, LN Shop. All right, so let me share my screen. Okay, let me bring up that page first. <laughs> All right, LN Shop. Okay, guys, can you see my screen? Are you seeing the website? Yeah, can see it. Nice. Awesome. All right. So what you have here is our Ellen Shop default template. Um, we stole stole the design from another Shopify website. So, <laughs> um, so we, we just got this is a, a, a an example website of what uh, a regular Ellen Shop um, from a merchant would look like. Now we provide all the design, we provide um, the coding and everything. What the merchant provides is a sp spreadsheet where uh, I think I had an example, right? So if you see here, we have a spreadsheet uh, with name, image, which is the image of the, um, the, the image of the product, the price, SKU, category, and number and inventory. Right, and basically you just export this um, as a spreadsheet file, and then use any online um, spreadsheet to JSON converter, and convert this file to a JSON file. Um, I wanted to, to, to make that a bit more streamlined, to maybe to provide an actual URL where you can upload your spreadsheet, and it spits out a JSON file. Um, but but right now you can find any of them online. And, and you just drop that, drop that within in the project and along with your lightning address and that's it. So you get a lightning address from any lightning address provider along with your inventory that looks just like this. And that's the end. That's the end of the configuration you have to do. You drop that in the, in the website project, in the code of the website and you deploy your, your website. Now you can deploy your website to GitHub I used GitHub Pages. Okay, I lost it. <laughs> um, right. I use GitHub Pages. So you realize it's ellenshop.github.io. So it's totally static. Um, there are no, there's no backend server. Um, whenever I make a change and I publish it, it automatically gets uploaded. I was trying to deploy it to Netlify as well, right before this. So I'm not sure if it worked. <laughs> um, I guess it didn't. <laughs> so, right. Um, but right, it works on github.io. Um, so, so here, um, right now I have six items in my inventory. I just some random learn with some stuff. So it, it links to some learn with some images. Um, I had some titles along with the, the amount denominated in sats, right? And these formed the inventory of the six items on the website. So once the user uploads their, their file, they'll get this, this displayed um, on their website. Secondly, it's time to go shopping. So we'll go and add to cart. Um, we're gonna have some uh, hot tech. Uh, you, up, you realize the cart gets updated. Um, some cutting edge device, sorry. Um, Intel inside. I'm gonna add the whole shop. <laughs> Digital device, open compute, smart device. You can add, add multiple of the same thing as well. Um, and then it's time to check out. So I scroll, go up to my cart and you'll see all the, the, all the items that I added to the cart along with their, their, their cost. Um, and then the subtotal of five, 580 sats. And of course, there's only one option is to play with lightning because that's cool. So when we click play with lightning, it gets a nice graphic and say, boom, Albi shows up. Hey, do you want to pay your 580 sets? I said, of course. So I, I confirm. And 
any minute now, I'll be able. Yes, your order has been placed. I, I get that. And if you can see my phone, I'm not sure. There's a lot of Satoshi notification telling me that I just received um, a notification. So um, that's pretty much it. Um, you 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 get you get the, the the notification in your in your wallet of the of the purchases. Um, the, the part that I didn't get to finish implement was an integration with uh, with uh, Airtable that would send over the order information and store that in, an, in a no code, this, in a similar spreadsheet style as you you have there. Um, so so the the person would be able to see the merchant would be able to see all the list of orders and and be able to make send off the pay, the products whatever products that are necessary um this has a lot of potential for growth um we we want to make it pretty easy to deploy um even hosted shops as well like shopify does um and it it can we want to have integrations with, with more than just lightning addresses um, we, we actually had LNBits working, um, so we, are, we want to add multiple um, platforms that can you can integrate to get payments over. And yeah, and you know we want this to become the go-to e-commerce platform whenever someone wants to someone wants to um, start Bitcoin, get accept Bitcoin payments online. So thank you, and thank you to all who participated, or um, or designers, or the people who helped us to come up with the ideas, you know, all our team members, Cody, Chris, um, Dave, you know, thank you guys for, for your, your contribution. And I, I hope you guys will one day get to use Ellen Shop. Awesome. Thank you very, very much, Rohan. That was super cool to see. And, uh, Hopefully we see some people building out some lightning shops pretty soon as well and using what you guys have done. So huge uh, hats off to you guys and uh, yeah, thanks. Um, so we have a submission from uh, LN Bits. Um, however, I think that potentially this was going to be done through a presentation. Just a, is that right, Ben? Just a thumbs up. I can maybe share my screen then. Yeah, yeah, the, we, we submitted a video, just um, the uh, the contributor isn't here, so the person who contributed the extension, so if you share the video, he's in the video. Cool, cool. All right, I'll do that now. Um, uh, hello. Cool, five minutes 32 on the dot, nice one. Um, Chrome tab. Okay, hopefully everyone can see my screen and also hopefully everyone can hear it. If I just press play, can everyone hear it? Uh, okay. Hello. All. So we're going to be looking at the Bolts Exchange extension, which Daniel has been working on over the Bolt Fun Hackathon. I'm really excited about it because with Alan Bits, um, I, can't, I can't see the video. I can't see the video. Uh, Same. You... No. Hmm. Okay, one second, sorry. Uh, Can you guys see it now? No. It's like a freeze frame of your face. Yeah, free frame. Yeah, free, that's what we've got. Uh, right. Same here. Yeah. Uh, okay, maybe whilst I sort this out, <laughs> um, maybe Team Geyser, maybe you guys can present whilst I sort this out. Is that cool? Hey, guys. Yeah, sure thing. Sounds good. Let me share screen here. All right, so so here we are. So um, I'll make from from Geyser. Uh, in the same team, we have uh, Second Light and Stelios. Um, 
There we go. A good first slide with a misspelling. So we have really, uh, we have, uh, by the way, can you guys see the screen? Yes. Yeah, okay, cool. So essentially we're, so this is, uh, we've been building for the weekend, uh, Geyser Grants, which is essentially our grants for uh, Bitcoin culture, education, hackathon, and, and, and many, many other things. That's a new platform for grants, really. And uh, we're trying to solve here is um, kind of some problems that we identified as we uh, sort of operated the Geyser Fund, the crowdfunding uh, uh, platform. And so we realized that a lot of funders want a trusted party to do campaign verification and the due diligence. Um, and also realize it's very, no, not really a, any way to donate to general uh, Bitcoin causes uh, beyond open source development. Um, so this weekend really just built a easy way for institutions and individuals to fund a diverse set of grants. Um, and that's sort of our solution alongside just a lot of bubbles, as, as you'll see. Um, we kind of interact with our community, asked for, you know, what would they uh, like more, more likely like to fund? And obviously the question of Bitcoin education is, is really high on the list. We got almost 200 votes. Um, Bitcoin education like destroyed everything else. People want to support um, the spread of, of the good word, um, but also hackathon, they're uh, right up there. So hopefully more of those. Um, and so how does it work? We'll kind of show you a quick demo, but then the, basically anyone can fund anonymously. Um, uh, each grant closes after a month and then there's a board that will get together to decide like, how to essentially uh, uh, spread out the funds. There's definitely opportunities for us to, ooh, there's opportunities for us to integrate um, essentially matching donations with the, with the, with the grant um, for us to, Kind of integrate with like uh, have APIs for so gaming companies, wallets, etc. I can sort of plug in into specific uh, uh, grants and sort of kind of uh, let this endless stream of sats go into the into into the into the campaign. So there, there's a lot that we can do. This is sort of the initial uh, initial layer. So let's get let's let me show you uh, what that looks like. So here we are in the Geyser Grants page, and you can see all these different grants um, and uh, some some of them are closed, and the only one that is open is the hackathon one. So you'll be in there, and you can see the pro the grant description. Uh, you can see the the board members that are yet to be determined. Uh, currently, myself and, and Stelios, but uh, open for anyone to become uh, a part of the board. And then essentially, uh, you can um, kind of just scroll down and see the the recent donations that have been given and the the comments. Uh, you can see the sponsors. Uh, and, and you can also apply to, to become uh, a sponsor with a, with a high enough donation. And also the interesting thing here is that you can essentially uh, submit a potential recipient. So if you are, in this case, uh, running a hackathon and you would like to be able to, uh, eligible to, to receive this uh, uh, or parts of the grant, you can essentially, uh, whether you are the owner of the of, of sort of the event or not, you can essentially submit a potential recipient with a name uh, and link. All right, so uh, you can say bolt and then you can plug it in and you can also, it's basically sure, uh, uh, showcase there upon, <laughs> upon ref refresh, right? So you can simply go there and sort of, and these will be, uh, the recipients will be, will be considered by, by the board um, for that. Uh, and in terms of the payment, you kind of you can contribute sats uh, by pressing this beautiful bubble, uh, and you can then send uh, the sats and then say uh, love this grant. And you can also appear as anonymous or by verifying with Twitter and contribute. We will generate uh, an invoice with uh, Geralbi and essentially. Confirm, and there you go. Success contribution to Bitcoin hackathons, and uh, an endless stream of confetti. So we really tried hard to make it look as appealing as possible. We had got some great uh, work with by Second Light on the front end, uh, and yeah. So this is this is it. This is Bitcoin uh, um, Geyser Grants. If you have any questions.
Awesome, Mick. That was super, super cool. And yeah, as Stephen said, the uh, the spinning grieve orb was uh, pretty mesmerizing there, actually. Um, <laughs> lots of claps coming through, man. So that's a uh, good sign in terms of, I think, people people like this. Um, yeah, again, awesome. thanks so much. I know you guys have been working um, super hard at this. Uh, I see John Carvalho would like to speak. Feel free to just unmute yourself, John, and um, comment. Yeah, I just have a quick question. Can you guys hear me? Very yeah, I hear it with a very metallic voice, though. Uh, uh, right. I knew John was a was a machine, a bot all along. Uh, does it sound better now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, my question is just uh, in the interest of, of fairness and my own ignorance, um, Geyser looks like a pre-existing project. Can you clarify? Which aspects of this you did for the hackathon, and which which things were Geyser previously to the hackathon? Absolutely, great, great question. So Geyser is this. So Geyser dot fund, and it's basically a crowdfunding, um, uh, crowdfunding uh, application using Lightning, and it's simply like uh, a landing page. And we have only one project live now. It's only funder facing. Now Geyser Fund is uh, still in staging. We will probably release it tonight. Uh, the idea is that it will sit on the header, and so as you click, um, uh, you know, grants, you'll basically uh, from from the header, you will appear here. When you here, uh, when you click on grants, you'll be able to visit the grants page, essentially. Um, yeah, and all of this has been done in the last three three nine. Thank you, sir. Cool. Yeah, that was. Uh... Good to clarify that. Um, so yeah, thanks for thanks for that. Um, nonetheless, still extremely impressive. Um, and as Mick said, if you haven't checked out uh, Geyser's uh, current implementation, then um, I think you can do that at Geyser. Um, really cool work happening over there. Um, okay, next up we have uh, Team Elite. Is anyone here from Team Elite that would like to uh, present? Good evening, everyone. Uh, hey there, I think I saw someone. Uh, Hi, good evening. Hey, there you are. How's it going? It's going fine, thank you. So I'll be presenting some elites. So my team members are here. I have Peter. I, I have we all worked on the project together. Sorry. Yeah, we'll be up in a bit. Sorry, can you see my screen? Yep. yep. All right. So we it's worked still on, on the Jitsi project. link, by the way. Sorry? It's still on the Jitsi meeting, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I'm coming in a minute. Okay. Cool. All right. So um, let me start up this way. So we built a, a platform called Elite Blog. So Elite Blog is like a platform that enables creators, content creators to create um, blogs or create articles and individuals who are interested will compensate them with a little Satoshi, one Satoshi. We just, for now, we just use the basic of 10 Satoshi. So you come on the platform, you use your lightning address to register. Once you're in, you could create content, you could see other things. So let me walk you through the process. Oh God, what is this? Okay. So I have an app here, yeah. So this is like the landing page. So I could log in with my Latin address. Let me copy it from here. I don't know if I've heard yet. So, so this is my Latin address. If I paste it here, if it's correct, I send it to an API, it verifies. So it gets my Latin address and I'm here. So this is my dashboard. You can see I have one post. Someone has read my article size, so I have 10 sats, and one, that's one user has read my article. So I could see the article I posted previously. This is it here. Have I paid for any article? Yes, I've paid for one that I read. And so I could see all the posts that have posted on this platform before. So also, I could create posts. So basically, that's what the platform is about. As a user, you come on and create a post. So let me create a post now. So let me call it. Um, demo posts you could give it any arbitrary username just like adding just an identifier 
Joyous call it um, bold. So you, can, you have a cover image because cover image are necessary for you. So you have a cover image. Yeah, so cover image. So I also want to just get the content. Let me just copy this guy here. You know, all of that, this guy. Boom. Yeah, so, oh no, didn't copy. Sorry. Yeah, oh God. Yeah, so I copied, I've copied these. I could kind of format it, could justify it. I could increase the font size to anything. I could bold it, make it bold. So also before I submit as a, as a creator, you can preview. So this is the post I just made, the cover image here, the name. So I use the username of bold. So this is the, the article, it could be any article you could write. So you're back here. So with this, you have publish so you could publish your article so it goes to the back end so what happens is as you are sending as i'm sending the, the content to the back end i'm also sending my um lightning address so what happens is on the database the lightning address is stored so so this is the post that created so assuming i'm a user another user this is a different user entirely i come on the platform and i say okay let me go see how many posts i have on this platform so I see this post, this demo post. I say, okay, let me view this post. So now, because I've not seen this post before, I'll be required to pay a certain Satoshi. For now, it's just 10 Satoshi. So if I click on pay, make payments, my get RV comes up and then enable it. Yeah. So just pay 10 Satoshi. If I pay, Vola, so transaction was successful, verify the transaction, and this user is able to view the post. So if I go to my address here, like my comp to my web my dashboard here, I should see it. So I have two posts, I have 20 Satoshi, and two different people has read that. So also I could see my so my post, I could always see the two posts I have here. So this is the two posts I have here. So I could also create a post. So this is this address. Let me see. I have, I guess I have it open somewhere. Oh god, where is it? No, sorry. I want to, okay, so for this guy, the guy who who just paid for a Satoshi now, this is the account here. I could come to my wallet and see. So you could see just now, March 28, this is the guy. Yeah, so my transaction was made, he has these. So this guy, if I go to my dashboard, I could see that I have, so I could access this content. I could also view, so my paid content. So any post you paid for, you have access to all this, you can always have access to it. So you come here, this is the demo post I had. So I could always read the content anytime I need to do that. So basically that's what it is, a platform that enables creators to come post their content and in order for individuals to read it or study it, Individuals pay them a centos, 10 satoshi, and that satoshi is paid directly to the user's address. So no central body, nobody's doing anything. Just ensure that people are paid for content. Uh, and Boomi will say value for value. If you're getting the value, be ready to at least pay or compensate the person who's creating the value for you. So that's that. If anybody has questions, anything, yeah. Um, I would like to ask how how it works. Um, log in with Lightning address because I know uh, Webalan, uh, I know Alan URL auth, uh, but I, I I didn't really know how log in with uh, Alan address would work. So okay, what I did was with once you pass me your once you once what we did. Sorry, know what I did. Once you once you enter your your Lightning address, we'll send it to the back end to check, is this Lightning address a valid Lightning address? If it's a val valid Lightning address, then we just, we have it saved on the local storage. So next time you just, anytime you want to make anything, we just use that to keep. We are not storing it anywhere. We just want to ensure that, okay, if you are posting a post, we, are, we have your address. Anybody who wants to read your post, they could just pay you directly. So I'm using LNURL to, so once the user wants to read a post, 
So I said the user, you can't this this put to UK. So I generate a an invoice for them and send to them. Use WebNL to open any of the the wallets. Then you pay directly to do that. Did I answer your question? Um, I don't really. I'm not really sure. But I, I so get. I'm not doing. I'm not doing any form of authentication here. I just okay. want to have your yeah, okay. your licensing address so I could pay yeah. to you. No authentication yeah. at all. I guess you could you could uh, have a login with LNURL auth and then the user submits their Lightning address and then that it would work like that probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just didn't want to do. We just didn't want to do anything authentication. Yeah. I just wanted it to be just pay and you get anything you want to get. So any other question? Yes, a quick one here. So so if you're using uh, LN uh, Lightning address for the for the login. Yeah, uh, you're not really aware when people are you, you as a platform are no, not aware when people are submitting uh, payments, right? No, we are not aware. It's just okay. it's independent. We are not aware of it. They just okay. pay directly and no no central body. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, man. That was that was really really cool. Um, good to see some content stuff coming up there as well. Um, yeah. Really exciting and nice integration of like you said the lightning address. Um, okay, I'm gonna try one more time to share my screen. <laughs> do you want me to? Do you want me to try sharing the the demo video and I could just talk through it? Yeah, yeah, I might as well go for it. Yeah. Yeah, um, and then it's crazy how much stuff's got built. Live streaming is on. It's very impressive um, how much stuff has been built in this hackathon. I must, uh, I must say. But if I select that, can you see this? Yep. You can see the video. Yep. Way cooking on gas. Okay, so uh, a brief. Um, Maybe I should do a brief like that. Even though that's working, I'm going to make it unwork. Um, let me select entire screen for a second. Actually, I'll just select entire screen now. That makes sense. Right. So you can see you can see yourselves probably, can't you? Um, so for a long time in an Alan Bits wallet, um, obviously you can receive payments. We've got all these amazing extensions to all these great things. And like a really useful extension for a cafe or a restaurant is the point of sale extension because they can very easily quickly spin up this point of sale, which they can use on their phones and um, they can transfer from phone to phone and it's all responsive and it looks nice and pretty and, and whatnot. Um, but then if you shell this to your cafe or bar uh, who has like a Bitcoin friendly owner, the next question they ask when they accumulate all these sats is, well, what can I do with the sats? And you're like, well, you can go, you know, order some hosting from Luna Node or something, I suppose. I don't know. Um, so being able to swap out to on chain um, and then be able to, you know, either sell your sats for fear or um, pay for something just using on chain Bitcoin transactions is currently necessary because there's kind of not enough. I mean, lots of people are building things at this hackathon to make it so you can spend your sats natively. Um, so the idea is that that point of sale would exist. And then someone, you know, in the bar, they generate invoices and then someone pays the invoice for their for their, for their uh, coffee or their beer, what have you. That goes into the user's wallet. And then we, with this new extension, we can set a threshold in the wallet. So say, you know, 100 quid or 200 quid. And then when it hits that threshold, it will just auto um, loop out to a on-chain address. Um, so we're using Bolt.exchange for this, which is a great project um, for looping out between Lightning and on-chain. Um, and you can actually loop out to things like Ethereum as well, but we're just going to use it for uh, Lightning to on-chain. It's done in a, in a relatively secure way where no one can steal each other's funds. Uh, so here's a little demo of the extension which uh, Daniel built for this uh, hackathon. Which So uh, if we can see this now, okay, so this is the wallet. Um, and then we're going to open up the Bolts extension, create a submarine swap in. Um, he puts in an amount that he wants to receive. And then selects the lightning wallet which he wants to receive it in create submarine swap okay now this goes and gets uh, an address from bolts dot uh, exchange so you can copy that on train address and now when you send those funds to that address then those sats are going to appear in the uh, in the lightning wallet we selected on LM bits so it's a way of very quickly being able to swap out from on chain to uh, lightning and then vice versa from lightning to on chain uh, so here we are, we're, we're sending now some 
Bitcoin to the address. I think he just sent one Bitcoin there because he couldn't be bothered uh, calculating what the exact amount should be. But as long as it's the amount or over, it will just swap out into the uh, into the address. And there we are. There we have the the, the Sats which have appeared then in the the Allen Bits wallet. So this will loop in from on chain to Lightning, and out from Lightning to on chain. Uh, so for me, I would say it's the uh, here we go. I would say it's the, the, the missing piece. Like I have a, a cafe nearby and the owner who owns the cafe is he likes Bitcoin, but I've still not shilled LM bits because I want to go to him. I want to say, look, use my LM bits install, um, accept lightning payments on Bitcoin and then give it your on chain address from Kraken or your hardware wallet or what have you. And then every 50 quid, it will just loop out. So his risk profile for using my LM bits install which is custodial after all, is 50 quid, 100 quid. So he can, he, so it means he can minimize that risk. And I don't have to explain to him how, maybe later on, if he gets really interested, I could then explain to him how to install his own node and, you know, install Alan bits and blah, 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 and all this stuff. But for, for now, just as an easy onboard, um, he can have a, a, you know, the point of sale QR code in his bar, his cafe, sorry. The, 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 the people working there can scan it and then they can accept Bitcoin. Um, and then it will all just, magically loop out to his uh, hardware wallet um uh, so that's the part of it which i'm really excited about but the part i just showed you is actually going the other way where it goes from on chain into into the lm bits wallet so pretty cool um so yeah the the exchange is called uh bolt star exchange um, um it's a great project and amazingly i completely it there's so many great projects in this space uh, i i had completely overlooked it until i went to istanbul and i was talking about this idea of the the looping out thing which i've been wanting to do for ages as an extension um, and all these Bitcoiners were saying, oh, we tried Bellstock Exchange. I was like, oh, and there's this whole thing which I didn't even realize existed. Um, we've also got another version. So obviously we've got all these different extensions. So we've got another version of it, which um, of, of a, a, a similar extension, which does loop outs uh, and loop ins. And that's going to be using Chain Market, uh, Atlantium Chain Market, which works very well as well. Um, so it's nice to have like two different versions of it. But the one which was made for this a hackathon was the one using Bolt Star Exchange. So thank you, Daniel, very much for that. Great job, sir. Uh, question, Ben. Uh, maybe I missed it. Uh, do you use XPub to for the on-chain addresses? No. So um, we have so in the chain market version, actually, because we've got an extension called Watch Only Wallet, where you can put in an XPub and generate uh, on-chain addresses, and then other extensions can use that to generate fresh addresses. So in the chain market version of this extension, yes, um, uh, you put an XPUB in the watch only wallet extension, and then you then link that extension to your watch only wallet extension, then it can generate fresh on chain addresses. For, this, for, the, for the purpose of simplicity, um, I think my man in the cafe who is accepting, you know, payments for his coffees, uh, and then every 100 quid or 50 quid is going to loop out to his on-chain address. I think he's fine just putting in an on-chain address, you know, which he generates on his hardware wallet or gets off his, the exchange. Um, uh, and, and then maybe later on we will add that functionality where you can you can put in an XPUB and then generate fresh addresses. But for now, it's just, just to keep it simple because I realized that the chain market version by connecting it to that extension, it's a little bit too complicated for, for the guy in the coffee shop who just wants LM bits, point of sale, and then this thing which magically loops out to his hardware wallet. Uh, that's enough, you know, that's enough complexity there, I think, rather than getting him all wrapped up in, in XPUBs as well and having to explain that to him. Um, so maybe later we'll have some advanced options in that extension um, for that, maybe. There's, yeah, there's, uh, there's also a refund address as well. Um, if, uh, so basically, if the Bolts Exchange thing fails, both parties just get their money back. Um, uh, whereas if it succeeds, obviously, then, you know, so but I say both parties, both sides of the transaction of the swap, get their money back. Um, so, uh, yeah, so it's, it's, you know, fail, safe, you know, there's, there's nothing, nothing which can go wrong. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ben. Um, uh, I know that, uh, like you said, the guy who's actually been, um, been working on this is I don't think he's uh here uh, at the moment Daniel but um hopefully he's watching the live stream somewhere and uh lots of applause coming in for Daniel and and the work that was done on this so really cool to see and yeah thank you very much um 
Uh, next up, I believe, is we have Team Sugar, uh, who did PayMyDesk.com. Um, is anyone here from Team Sugar and wants to present? David, maybe? Yep, I'm here. Hey, David. How's it going? Um, been really interesting to watch everyone's stuff so far. And, uh, hopefully this prototype works. So if I go and try and share my screen, I guess. Um, more actions. Share. Okay, cool. Can you use, um, see rent the desk with Bitcoin? Can you hear me okay? Sure yeah. thing. Cool. Okay, so th this was, or let me just start by saying this is actually the, the first project I've ever done with Bitcoin, and um, I love, I've loved the experience. So thanks everyone for. The support journey for from all the mentors it just has been really cool to be involved with it yeah the whole idea of this was that we could maybe rent a desk with bitcoin and um, this is the concept where maybe there, there was a qr code on a desk and then they could scan it and pay it that was a very simple concept but it sort of changed a bit and um, we've done it we made myself and millie were um in the team and we did a lot of design thinking about how might we do things and a lot of design work around like UIs and actual just going and doing drones and stuff like that. And we actually hacked something together pretty fast. So what we did was created a sort of a startup called Pay My Desk. And the whole idea is like the Airbnb of um, of desk renting. So the concept is that the user can go in and see what desks are available. And um, if they want, they can actually go into it and they know that that desk is in their area and, and they can they can pay for that desk then with a with a bitcoin ln url um if if you want to list your desk there's an option to do that so what we do is go in and actually list the desk and, and again anyone can do that so the, the idea is that we can aim this at co-working spaces but the whole concept is like potentially you know if you had a spare desk in your garage you could probably do this so what the user does from the admin side of things is just they choose where they are and they would then name their desk. So let's say that this is a new co-working space in Belfast called Satoshi's. Um, and it's, this is desk number two. And it's super cheap, like so it's only 20 sats, but the user can set whatever they want. And then what they would do is actually just select a picture of the desk. Um, so it's a desk that's in the garage. And they hit upload. What that does then, it just uploads a, a wee photograph to the thing. So what we're doing is saying that the, the lister is saying the date where they are and then this, they've named it and the price, they hit submit. And that then gets submitted to the actual, the homepage and it hasn't come up yet, but I'll show you quickly how this, how we've built this. So, and we use this service called Ellen Bits, which is really amazing. Um, and what what it how, how it works for us is we're using um Zapier. So it's a lot of this is done by no code. I'm not like a big developer, I'm more of a designer. But um, what we do is we use the Ellen Bits um, API to do two simple things. We say that the the desk is listed. And um, so what we do is we check the, the field is in the air table. We we do a, a post request and then we create a blog post using Ghost, um, which is where this website is here. So if I refresh that again. So Satoshi's lab, is that a new one now? Desk two. Sorry, I'm just checking to see if that was come through. So that's the desk, that, that's the submission that I made. And is this coming through yet? So it should appear as a blog post. Um, I'll show you if that's not going to work. Let me refresh again. I'll check the quick check this the SAP history. Yeah. So twenty eight seventeen thirty nine. 1745. So the desk is listed. If I go back to this website. Yeah, so it's, it worked. So the photograph, you can see it, it appears here. 
Uh, and then the user could potentially go and go, oh, that's a really cool desk. Um, I'm going to rent that someday. And then from their end, what would we've got to look at if I split this up into two? So the idea is that there is, um, if I show you, our table. So this would be like the, the admin side of things. If I split that into two, oh, it's not split into two. So just to show you how, how it would work, the concept is that they've listed the desk and then it's been marked as available. Then the idea is that the user, um, I don't know if you can see me while I'm doing this, but what I'm doing is open in Wallet of Satoshi and I'm going to scan it. So I'm scanning the, the code here and then it's saying, uh, you will send 20 sats to um, the server and show my camera in case you're looking at that. And then I hit OK. And then what that does, it says payment is on the way. And what we do then quickly, it, because Wallet of Satoshi lets us open another link, what it does, it opens another link in another form. And we just put in our name and our email address. You could use a pseudonym if you wanted, but we just do an email address so you can contact the person and then maybe they could be added as a member to the site in future. Yeah. hit submit so that's then submitted and then hopefully this here changed the book so you can see now that the we actually submitted the payment um, and then that's been tagged as booked and for the purpose of that we can also have like a wee album there you can imagine this would be password protected and you can see that um, on the 28th there's three desks and one of them's available and two of them are booked so that's very quickly um what we did so i'll stop sharing there and if there's any questions, feel free to ask me any questions. Awesome. Thank you so much, David. Um, I can definitely see something like that getting implemented at a, I don't know, hot desking workspace or something like that. That seems like something which would be, um, yeah, really, really cool. And let's have a bit of design focus there as well. Um, I see Rene's got a question. Um, maybe we keep these Sorry, no. short and sweet. Just because. Uh... Yeah, no, go, go ahead, Rene. Sorry. I, I just misclicked, sorry. <laughs> oh, no worries. Okay, that's easy then. Um, I really like the, 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 the concept, actually, of having the success action of an LNURL send you to a form. It's a really good idea. There's loads of applications for that. Very innovative. Yeah, but to, to be honest, basically, I did that because I couldn't work out how to um, get the get the, 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 uh, or the, the transaction number sent across. So what I did was I used a, a hidden field and sent that to a form and then tagged that as a hidden field and then it got sent to the, the form. So that's, that's why I did that. <laughs> cool, but thanks. Nice. Yeah, yeah, really cool. Hats off for the, the innovation there. Sometimes I feel like the no code is a good way of figuring out how to kind of like create a cheat. So nice. Um, next up we have Team Litbits. Uh, is anyone here from Team Litbit? Yes. Hey, how's it going? I am cool. I'm all hey, right. Toby. Good to have you. Um, stage is yours if you'd like to present. Okay. Give me minutes. Hi, I'm Siri. How can I help? Oh. <laughs> okay, I'll just share my screen. I uh, can't see anything at the moment. Thanks, my screen. Yep. Okay. So um, I think I have my teammates here. I have Omoni and I have um, Jeremiah. So um, this BitPay is a, it's a payroll application, um, which um, utilizes Lightning. So this is the UI for lead BitPay. Um, 
right now we're authenticating with username and password. So um, here's the dashboard. So the dashboard shows the balance, start balance in the in the channel and the active channel and the PS connected. So um, this system is for basically for employers uh, to um, pay their employees and uh, the employers can add details by going to the payroll and adding the employee details. So um, let me add an employee right now. Say I'm paying Dave and uh, the salary is 150 sats. And um, for demo purposes, I think we'll use minutes. So selecting minutes, I add his details. And um, for now, uh, we are we are actually right, utilizing Lightning Polar um, to create um, these um, accounts or peers, as the case may be. And uh, due to some limitations of um, both level, um, um, there yeah, we have what, to. What, what did you use? Lightning? What? I didn't get that. So I, we, I, I oh, used. Okay, okay so I think I'll get it from here. So what he was trying to say is we actually implemented the Lightning. We used the LND implementation to implement this. So for us to run to simulate a real implementation, we have the puller running at the back for for like real life simulation, like a real simulation. So what the application actually does is to pay, employer uses it to pay employees in real time, such that I don't need to wait to pay day or I don't need to wait to the end of the month or to the end of the week to get my pay. If I work two hours, I get my two hours immediately. Immediately I got work, work my one hour, I get the pay. The second hour, I get the pay. So that way, employees can actually use their strategies for other things or do another transaction if they need it. And also, another use case is where maybe I'm holding a loan and interest is going on, and I've already worked, but I needed to wait till the payday to pay the person I'm owing. So with this solution, you don't have to wait till that time. I can actually, if I've worked three hours, I can take my three hours and pay whoever I need to pay. So I don't need to work, wait till the end of the month for, for hours that I've already worked and I will work past the hour. So that was what we are trying to demo here. Okay. Yeah, you use Polar, but uh, as the backend, that's what I understand. Yeah, yes. we use Polar. Yeah. Okay, yes. gotcha. so thank you. I have to add the no note details now for this particular employee, Dave. So I've added the no note details for Dave. Um, I have to add for Sarah also, because without adding without adding that, um, the system will not be able to to pay. So which is um, kind of like a limitation with um, um, boats, boats, 11. So, um, we add the certificates for Sarah and the macaron and the uh, host. So, yep, um, add it for Sarah. So, if I go to the dashboard, I'm seeing that, um, uh, you can see that uh, a minute has gone by and we have paid, um, David. They've, they've earned 150 sats per minute. And um, if you can wait an extra minute, um, then it will pay, the system will pay Dave and Sarah. So I'm just waiting for that. Meanwhile, the sad, the total balance is also reducing as, as the system pays. Uh, so I'm just waiting an extra minute for that to happen. Mm. Yeah, so and another minute has gone by, so another payment has been made for Sarah and for Dave. Sarah earns 250 sats and Dave earns um, one people sats. So yeah, like I said, um, employers can um, can write on our, on our payroll system to, um, to, to pay their employees. So yeah, so in a nutshell, that's what Little Big Pay is about. Thank you. Well, not to mention a pretty sweet name as well. <laughs>
Love it. Um, yeah, that's that's really really cool. Big uh, big claps to you guys there. Thank you so much. Um, we have five minutes left scheduled. A couple more teams. Um, so maybe we can try and get those guys in first, and then maybe we can just open up a bit of discussion. Um, so next up, I have uh, Sparking Interest. Um, they actually said that they didn't want to present, unless there is someone here from uh, Sparking Interest. Um, if not, uh, we can let someone, I believe, uh, Team Trev is here, um, and they did want to present. So if actually, if anyone from Team Trev is here first, and then maybe I can present the Sparking Interest uh, one afterwards. Anybody from Team Trev? Uh, I believe it was submitted by Cynical Coffee. Well, maybe they submitted a video so we could uh, uh, do the judging um, uh, on the link. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, should I try and present the videos? Uh, if they have one, but um, yeah, we're probably going up on time again. I want to be. Yeah, let's take a look. See how long these videos are. Okay. Yes. And you're gonna have this problem with the audio <laughs> not coming through. Yeah, yeah. Um, so maybe you could just drop it in the. Yeah, I could drop the links in the chat, um, and if people want to take a look, they can take a look. So this one is for uh, sparking interest, uh, and this other person has given me some Google Drive. Okay, and then this second one is... Uh, that second one is Team Trev. Um, okay, guys. Hey, can you share in Slack as well? Or because uh, yeah, yeah, because I'll share in Slack. I'm running, I'm running GT on a different device. No worries. Uh, let me share it in there for you. Um, Thank you. There's been some amazing projects I've seen there. Like uh, we have 14 new Lightning applications. Uh, um uh that are web-based um in the space now guys that's uh i think that's a pretty big uptick um i want to like thank all of you guys who have um participated and um again spent the time to um to work and learn and stuff i know many of you are doing this for the first time <laughs> so claps there i think it hope it's not too loud but yeah um yeah amazing amazing work everyone such amazing work uh wow <laughs> i think the judges are gonna have a hard time for sure um but yeah um i do want to highlight um a couple things um so for anyone who um would like to take their ideas further um perhaps see how um they could turn this into a business potentially um we have um uh, two VC firms who have been supporting um, the hackathons. They came in. Um, Fulga Ventures um, is one of them. Um, and um, Hivemind is another. Now, um, Oleg from Fulga, he has some... Um, uh, uh, there's a link on the website, by the way, um, on bold.fun. Maybe, uh, Ed, maybe you could show it. Um, yeah, so um, you could schedule a meeting with him um, uh, to... Um, with your team to discuss the project and um, he'll give you some kind of like um, startup advice basically on how to turn your hackathon project into um, into a business potentially. Um, uh, the other um, the other uh, person is uh, Max from Hivemind um, and uh, we're going to be doing a Twitter spaces tomorrow um, to discuss some of these projects um, it's a kind of like a Q&A with Max and um, just kind of like a retrospective of the hackathon. So, um, yeah, that, uh, make sure to check out our t Twitter spaces uh, sometime tomorrow. Um, I think we have to schedule it um, uh, uh, after today's session. But, um, yeah, so just follow us on Bolt under, uh, Bolt Fun underscore BTC on Twitter. And um, 
uh, if you want to take part in that. And um, uh, Max is going to be doing something similar, but in a more kind of like um, uh, uh, open, um, not one-on-one -on -one, um, uh, way. So, yeah. Yeah, probably a slightly more sort of generalized approach to sort of trying to find uh, funding basically for uh, projects that you're working on and kind of uh, probably a little bit more of a general um, approach on what he's also doing with Hive Mind and how he's sort of um, approaching the VC space within uh, within Lightning, uh, what sort of projects he's investing in, things like that. So, um, yeah, as John said, Oleg is going to be offering kind of one-to-ones for people who want to sort of discuss how to potentially get the projects that you've been working on funded. So really do go ahead and use that. Um, I've posted the Canonly link in there, and then Max is going to be on Twitter Spaces tomorrow. Also, please feel free. Um, please do come along and, and join us on that. Um, we will be opening up. Um, a bit of time at the end of that for some Q&A. So if you have any particular questions that you want to direct at Max as well, then um, you will have an opportunity to ask those. Um, cool, well, we are at the hour now. Um, it is 7 p.m. European time. Um, thank you everyone who has uh, presented um, and everyone really who's actually just taken part. I think it's been pretty overwhelming, the amount of submissions. Um, I think when we first started putting this hackathon together, Johns and I were slightly worried that we would have enough projects that would actually fill out first, second, and third place. So um, yeah, it's just really cool to see um, all of these submissions, so many people taking part, a lot of people just having fun and learning and, um, and getting stuck in. And that's really what it's all about. Um, I will also post a... Um, we have a feedback form if anyone uh, if anyone would like to um, give us any feedback, um, please feel free to do so. It's kind of um, open and general. Um, good, bad, whatever it is, feedback, um, we are sort of welcome to it. How can we make Shock the Web a little bit better the next time? Um, so I think uh, what we will probably do is meet back here in uh, 30 minutes or are we going to be doing the judges actually on the main stage John's we going to do that? yeah yeah we're going to be doing judging on the main stage and um okay. yeah I hope uh <laughs> 30 minutes deliberation is uh, a lot of projects to go through so it's going to be a little intense but um but yeah we'll um, do the presentation on YouTube um and you get we'll drop the link in the slack and on the Twitter um so make sure you follow along and um right. And and I also want to say we we are having another shock the web in three months time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it's been such a such a great um, turnout and stuff. So we hope you have, guys have um, gotten a lot of value from this. Um, yeah. So it's 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 not all about winning, by the way, <laughs> but. Um, but yeah, okay, I'm going to stop uh, waffling and we're going to go voting. <laughs> cool, guys. Uh, so yeah, feel free to um, stay in here for another 30 minutes and hang out and chat and talk with one another. Um, but we will be doing, yeah, as John said, we'll be doing the judging and stuff on the main stage, streaming to YouTube. So feel free to join us there. And then we'll come back in here afterwards for a first hackathon hangout, chance to sort of just wind down and um reflect on the last week so we will see you guys in about 30 minutes hopefully Get your thing finished, Jay. You still there? He's gone. Oh, he's muted. He's pretending to be there. Bye, all. <laughs>